Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Splits to DIY, and today I want to talk about how I made these ornament PCBs. I had kind of thought back in September uh, that I wanted to try to make a PCB ornament kind of like in a badge kind of style, uh, and I wanted it to be a round bobble, and I wanted to have a hook on top, and I just wanted it to do some sort of like fun LED thing. Uh, I wasn't entirely sure uh, what kind of LED thing I wanted to do. Originally I was looking at like a 555 timer kind of thing, similar to what I did with my badge, uh, but I eventually decided on these fun uh, RGB slow cycle LEDs, which as you can see on the back, like they're just your normal LEDs. And I've used them before uh, on a Raspberry Pi Christmas tree uh, PCB uh, that I have a video on. And I also did an additional video uh, where I kind of discussed how I tested the power draw on these uh, and figured out which resistor would work best with them in using a coin cell battery. And that was all in prep of making these PCBs. And I'll link this video um, at the end uh, if you're curious on how they work. So the reason why I went with these is obviously it's super simple. You just throw them in a circuit with power and that you have RGB. Super simple. Um, and it made concentrating on the other aspects of the ornament a lot easier, which as you can see, like there's some, some PCB art happening. Very basic art, nothing like too fancy, nothing like a shitty add-on style thing, <laughs> but uh, still, this was the first time I was doing that. And that's why I have up on the screen here. This is the vector art that I made in Illustrator to bring into Eagle so that uh, when I sent the PCBs off to Fab, they could come out looking like this. Uh, so I followed a tutorial by Andrew Soa uh, that he did with Hackster.io, and I'll link that video down in the description. I won't rehash what he goes through in that video, but he does an excellent job just kind of explaining how you export your art from Illustrator to get it into PCB software. And as you can see over here, all my layers, uh, and basically I've got I, ha I don't have that many things going on here. I basically just have the kind of circle at the top. They'll eventually have the hole cut out in the top of the ornament, as you can see there. I have uh, some just some text uh, with the date. I have this kind of fun thing that I drew uh, using the shape tools in Illustrator. This is actually font. It's just um, it's just a piece of Unicode that looks like a fun. A little star with light coming out of it. I had tried to like draw one in Illustrator, but I'm not the best kind of digital artist, and I was trying to do this as simply as possible. So I went with just using a, a Unicode font and just throwing that in there. Uh, this is another vector thing I drew at the bottom, and then finally again just font saying Happy Holidays. Uh, and I actually layered the font so that there would be kind of an outline around it, and shifted it just so it'd be slightly off center. Uh, and the way that you export it, basically, um, which Andrew goes through in his video, is you can just basically kind of change the color between like black and white, and you can get different groupings for your art depending on how you want them to be masked off on the PCB and what layers they want to be on. And so I can show you in my folder here, I knew that I wanted the copper to be under everything because it makes the silk screen look a little bit sharper, as suggested in his video. Uh, the silk. The only thing I wanted white was the uh, kind of shapes for the orb, uh, the font, and the kind of emoji thing in the middle. Uh, and then I didn't want any solder mask on the uh, font or the top of the ornament here that the drilling was going to go through. And so that became a separate layer that I exported as well. And this will make more sense if you watch Andrew's video. Uh, the only thing is Andrew uses uh, KiCad, and right now I'm currently using Eagle. Uh, and he didn't go into what you would do with Eagle, uh, so I kind of hodgepodge some some things together to get it to work for me with Eagle. I ended up importing them into Eagle as bitmaps, and the way to get a bitmap out of what you export from Illustrator is very simple. You can actually open it up in Microsoft Paint, and then just simply save it as a bitmap. That's what I did. And then I'll just quickly show you what you do in Eagle. I'll just quickly show you what to do in Eagle to import a bitmap and kind of how it worked for me. Uh, so you simply go File, Import uh, in a new um, board layout. I recommend starting with the art and then placing your components because otherwise it might get a little, a little wonky. So you just go Import, Bitmap. You go OK. 
Then you select your bitmap. So let me go to my project file and then you grab your bitmap and then you select which two colors in your bitmap you want. Uh, chances are you want to just import the black because that's what you exported from Illustrator and chances are you know what layer you want to be um, adding this to. So you press OK. And then what you want to do is you want to do DPI and you want to do the DPI depth that you chose. So 400 is tends to be the default. That's what I did. And this will keep the scaling correct. If you don't do this, then however you imagined your art to be scaled as, especially if you were kind of designing it from the point of view as this is the board, um, this art area is the board area, then it will be off and your components won't fit as you imagined. Uh, so you definitely want to do it like this if you're kind of going from that perspective. If you're just looking for a little image that you kind of want to like stretch around, that's different. But basically you do this, you press OK, and then it comes up with a script that's going to basically make these tiny little lines that are stacked on each other, and that's how the art is imported. So you run the script, and then you see it, it comes in. So basically once you import your bitmap, have each bitmap file that you import be put onto the correct layer, and you kind of do this one at a time. Uh, where you highlight everything, go to change, layer, choose the layer you want, T-place is the silk screen, so let's just do that just for an example, and then you right click on it after highlighting and change group. You can see everything now is on that layer. Uh, and then if you were to import another bitmap, and let's just do that really quickly just to show how this works, uh, let's, let's bring in the mask and you just want the black, okay, DPI, 400, okay, run the script, and you can see that's coming in and it's staying the right shape. You can make it show that you aren't seeing the top layer, so it hides it, so you just have this, and now you can make this the layer that you want it to be. You'll again go to change, layer, Let's make it the top just to show some contrast. Press OK, right click, change group. And now when I bring back in the other layer in Eagle, you can see everything there. So that's how I did the art. And it's, I wish I could tell you that it was as simple as I just made it look, uh, but it wasn't. <laughs> it probably took me a few hours and it took a lot of trial and error and like rerouting the board and everything just because another big part of that when I mentioned the scaling that really threw me off a bit so definitely make sure you keep your scaling correct and that you just kind of take your time if you follow those steps it should be a fairly painless process for you but yeah and I think another thing that saved me is my art is very simple uh, as I showed you in Illustrator like there's not a lot going on here so if this is the first time you're doing it keep it simple and it'll be okay uh, but let's open up the actual board file. So here's the board. Uh, you can see my different layers and everything. Uh, I did have one writing mistake uh, that this is a bit of a shame. And I have a little bit of a bodge on all my boards as a result, but it's not too bad. You can see LED leg is kind of bent here and running to a resistor. Uh, and that's because I forgot the trace right here. Um, so I, let's actually add that in right now. <laughs> I was pretty upset, but considering everything that could have gone wrong with this project, I guess I'm not too upset about it. Okay, and I'm a full convert to curved traces now. There we go, all better. <laughs> Super simple, but yeah. So that was the one mistake I did with my board, so I sent off to fab, um, but not too bad, and luckily it's an easy enough bodge that, uh, and I did my routing so that I kept the resistors nearby the corresponding LEDs. Imagine if I'd put them all off to the side or something, then I'd be in real trouble. Uh, that I can just bend the leg and comfortably reach the resistor, and I'm even able to trim off a bit of the LED leg as well. Uh, so, not too bad, but yeah. So that's my little bodge. <laughs> and the schematic for this board is a lot simpler <laughs> than, uh, other things I've done, because we've just got LEDs, resistors, a switch, and a coin cell battery holder. I also put the LED text numbering uh, on the back of the board, uh, so you can see it here, because I didn't want it to say LED123 around, I wanted it to be really clean on the front, and really just have the art, um, but I kept the text because I wanted to be able to tell which LED 
I was hooking up to what. Um, I kept it mirrored because that doesn't really bother me. Um, it might bother you. Uh, but then I could also tell if I had an LED that wasn't lighting, I could tell immediately which number it was and which resistor it was as well. So that was the board design. Uh, and thank goodness it was a simple circuit because otherwise it would have been a mess. But I was basically rerouting this board a lot because of all of the stuff I was trying to do with the art. Um, and that's why I ended up missing that final well, thing, and no, I didn't run the check on the board. I should have done that. But uh, So then I exported the Gerber files, and I actually sent them off to Fab at two different Fab houses. Um, I sent them off to, of course, Osh Park to get the perfect purple PCBs. Um, and I also did Seed Studio, uh, only because I wanted to use uh, a red solder mask uh, since it is a Christmas ornament, and I wanted to... I, I'm making these as gifts for people, like a lot of them, like over 40. <laughs> so I've assembled over 40 of these boards uh, and have been giving them as gifts. Uh, and so that's why I went with the red solder mask. Also, I Seed Studio is cheaper for Fab than Osh Park. And then the soldering, um, I've definitely gotten it down so that I can solder up a board in about 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, and the method that I use is I, I start with the resistors um, and I kind of go across the board uh, doing flux. Then I um, tin one pad on each resistor, and then I solder up the actual resistors first by soldering them down on that tinned pad, and then going back around and soldering up the other side. So then next up, the switch. First, I will flux the pads for the switch. Then I'll put the switch into place. Like I said, it has these kind of like holes that you can line it up with, which makes it very handy. Solder that up with a bit of flux. It goes really easily. Uh, and then after that, um, all the surface mount components are done, uh, and we flip over to the through-hole components, which is the LEDs, uh, place those in, and then personally, for through-hole components, I can't not use um, sticky tack. So I actually ended up, I, I don't know if you, can sticky tack be a, a jig? Because I, I definitely, I definitely was kind of using it as a jig, where I had like, um, the circle that fit around them perfectly. I'd kind of drape it over, um, squish it down so that everything was in place, and then one larger blob in the center for the center LED, flip it back around in my vise, solder those up, clip off all the leads except for the anode on LED 4, this poor little little bodgy guy, <laughs> and then bend that anode over. Uh, and to solder that up uh, so that it would be a strong connection, I was putting solder directly on my iron's tip, like a big blob, and then kind of dragging it back and forth on the anode leg, um, and then adding solder in so that it made contact with the solder on the resistor's um, pad that was closest to the LED, and that's so that enough flux was transferring, enough heat was transferring, so that there was kind of a stronger connection than just like blobbing solder on and kind of hoping for the best. So that's the method I used for that, and then I snipped off the rest of the anode that wasn't needed for the connection. And then finally uh, is the surface mount uh, coin cell battery holder. Um, what I was doing was uh, tinning one of the pads and then taking the holder. I was having to bend it just ever so slightly because it was just a little bit too big for um, the footprint that I had chosen. Uh, and then lining it up, holding it uh, on the on the pad that hadn't uh, been tinned, and then adding solder to the other side so that it would kind of stay lined up. Once that was tacked down, I went to adding um, solder to the other side and adding more solder to the pre-tinned side so that it was nice and secure. Uh, after that, load in your two coin cell batteries uh, and then flip it on. Make sure all nine LEDs are on. If not, fix it. And there we go. And after a while, um, I could do that in about 10 minutes. First time I did it, it was probably about 30 minutes. Uh, and then after that, I got it down to a science and got it kind of scored away. So, And I'm just really happy with it. I think it looks like a nice classic ornament. Uh, it's gotten good reaction so far. Uh, from the people that I've given them to. I'm going to be giving the rest of them uh, this week and uh, this coming weekend for various parties and holiday gatherings. So really excited. But that's going to do it for this video. Uh, this was a really cool experience. Uh, first time kind of dabbling with doing anything funky with the PCB art. Definitely check out Andrew Soa's uh, video 
on how to do it. He goes way more in depth. He does a great job explaining it. It's definitely one of the more clear things I've heard in this department as far as how to get your PCBs looking snazzy. Um, but that's going to do it for this video. Uh, I will have all the links down in the description. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more content like this. And until next time, happy holidays.